Welcome to a short video that I hope will give you some insight into the true nature of harmony. We're going to accomplish this, I hope, by demonstrating the physical basis, I emphasize physical basis, for why the notes in a major triad sound so good together. So in order to do that, we've got four things. We've got a piano, we have a mutant, I emphasize, mutant guitar. It's got one string, tuned to middle C, and nominally, nominally tuned to middle C. I apologize for people whose ears are a little more perfect than mine. I've got a pick so I can play nice and loud. And I've also got some visual aids so we can very clearly see what's going on. Let's go! Let's begin by making sure we understand what happens when we pluck a guitar string. Now, without going into the physics and the engineering mechanics behind this, I'm just going to make a statement of fact, and that is this. When you pluck that string, its vibration is a lot more complicated than meets the eye. So intuitively you might expect it to vibrate, as you see in this black line, as one wave in one piece that vibrates back and forth. But the interesting part is, it also vibrates as if the string was composed of two separate strings of half the original length. And so it vibrates as if there were two separate waves, and so on. Three separate waves, as in this blue line, four separate waves, as in this red line, five separate waves in this yellow line, and so on. We, I stopped here at five, but you can go in integer multiples to infinity, sixth, seventh, eighth, and so on, right? So, before we go on, just accept this as fact, and let's get some terminology under our belts. So, one, one term that's important is the fundamental frequency, and that's this main big single wave vibration. And that, it turns out, is what we perceive as the pitch, in this case, middle C. But there are also these other shapes, typically lower in amplitude, right? Integer multiples of vibration, of lengths of the original string. And these are called harmonics. Now what's interesting about these harmonics is you may not hear them explicitly, occasionally you do and can, but usually the harmonics are kind of embedded within the overall sound. And this is what we perceive as timbre or timbre. And it's what gives an instrument its particular sound. But that's a little bit of an aside. What's of interest to us is the way that these harmonics interact and sound together. And that's where we're going to discover the organic physical basis of harmony. So, let's take a look at these harmonics. Oh, by the way, also called overtones. You'll hear those terms used synonymously. Harmonics and overtones. Let's take a look at some of these overtones one by one and see how they relate to the sound of a major triad. Welcome to the first harmonic. Now again, without going into the physics background, we're just going to jump to the chase. And the chase is this. The first harmonic is what happens. Right? It's this green line. What happens when you virtually cut the string in half? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play a string of unit length one, virtually cut it in half, and listen, and we're going to compare the two sounds and see what we discover. So, one, and here's a half. And it just so happens that that lines up on the, fret, on the guitar that has two dots. This is no accident. <laughs> and by, by the way, I'm not a guitar player, so if I hack through this, please, please forgive me. So, 
Unit length one, let's see. That's our middle C. Now, let's play string of half that length. And listen and go, well, what is that? Well, guess what? It's an octave higher. It's the same exact pitch, an octave higher. So, full length, middle C, half length, is C one octave higher. So just as an aside, it just so turns out that when you cut a string in half and pluck it, it vibrates at twice the frequency of the original string. And for reasons that psychologists and neurologists can't explain, I don't th I've never heard anyone explain, we perceive that pitch as the same pitch but one octave higher. So, just store that for now as we take a look at the other harmonics. Welcome to the second harmonic, which is what you get when you divide a string into thirds. So, let's do that, see what happens. So, here's string of length one. Let's now cut that string into a third. It just so happens to be on this fret of the guitar, right? Let's compare the sounds. One. One third. One. One third. Guess what? Wow. It's the note G. And guess what? This is no accident. And G, you probably know this, but I'm going to say it explicitly. G just happens to be the five. The five of a... C major triad, right? Hmm. So I'll just file that away for now as we continue to look at some of the other harmonics. Welcome to the third harmonic, which is what happens when you effectively cut a string into fourths, as you see in the spread line. Here, right? So. Let's compare the sounds. So, string one, unit length one, and here's fourths. And unfortunately, we've run out of frets, but uh, I'll do my best to improvise here. So, here's one, and here's a fourth. One, fourth. Well, it just so happens that that's now the same note, C, two octaves higher than the original. And by the way, this should come as no surprise, right? We learned earlier that if you cut a string in half, it vibrates at twice the frequency, and that's perceived as the same pitch an octave higher. Well, if you continue that process, right, half, and now half again, which is fourths, you're going to double the frequency yet again, and that's going to be perceived as yet another octave higher, right? Hmm. Again, we're starting to see the organic basis of harmony. Let's take a look at one more harmonic. Welcome to the fourth harmonic, which is what you get when you effectively divide our original string into five equal parts. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's compare the sounds. So here's one, and here's one-fifth. So again, I've run out of frets here, so I'm going to have to uh, cheat a little bit with my fingernails. Let's see what that sounds like. So one, one-fifth. Wow. I hope at this point this is not coming as a surprise, right? That happens to be the note E, two and a half octaves higher than our original note. And it just so happens to be the three of a C major triad.
So I'd like to leave you with a final thought, and that is this. While I hope that you found this to be somewhat intellectually and academically interesting, I also hope that you take away an important musical lesson, and that is this. Musical harmony is not something that happens after music theory, right? Don't get hung up on things like half steps and whole steps. That stuff is just nonsense in, in, a very, in a very real way. That's just nonsense. Those are just artifacts of people trying to apply mathematics to making sense of music. But the reality is this. Music, real harmony, has its basis in concrete reality. It doesn't need abstractions, right? Real musical harmony is based on organic physical relationships of vibrations in time and space, right? So anyway, thanks for checking in. Peace. Have fun in life and music.